Hello, Camp Calvary friends. Oh my goodness, I have a special announcement for you. On August 29, I wrote a two and a nine, so you could look it up on your calendar. Put a big smiley face on that day. August 29, Camp Calvary's meeting in person again. Yoo-hoo! After, oh my goodness, how many months? way too many months of me seeing you on video. We are going to meet, but we're gonna have it even better. We're having a celebration. We're gonna have food, picnic food, probably hot dogs, hamburgers, mm, probably ice cream, yep. And guess what, a bounce house, we're gonna have that. We're gonna have it be a celebration picnic to start off Camp Calvary in person. Invite your friends. You can invite your people that are sitting next to you today too. I'm sure they'll want to come and have some good food with us and watch you bounce. Have fun. Oh yeah. Pastor Greg just told me it's for the entire church. Woohoo! Even better. We're going to have a huge grill out and lots of hamburgers and Pastor Greg will probably buy us Culver's. Yay! Uh -huh. <laughs>
In my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. Speaking of light, how much do you know about Ray, our glowworm? He is our Bible memory buddy. How much do you know about glowworms? Here's a this or that challenge. Glowworms go around to get their food by chasing down other bugs and eating them, or making a sticky web and catching other bugs. What do you think? If you think it's going around and catching them, putting them in your mouth, go like this. If you think a sticky web, go like this with your hands. Here's the drum roll. Pastor Greg's thinking that, and guess what? He is wrong. It is a sticky oh. web. They have interconnected webs, uh, silky threads that they use. Hey, you know what? You're gonna learn more about it after this video. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh hey, I'm Ray, the brightest glowworm you ever did see. My scientific name is Arachnocampa luminosa. That's a long name. Hmm, if I had to pick a celebrity glowworm name, I'd choose Ray Glow or Raisin. <laughs> Why? Well, because I'm always raising the roof of caves with my glow. I'm a young, hungry glowworm. I eat a lot. Maybe you eat a lot too. You probably go to the grocery store or a restaurant to get your food, or maybe you grow fruits and vegetables in a garden. Well, I build my own beautiful food-catching contraption. I'll show you. Here it is. Isn't my sticky restaurant one of the prettiest sights you've ever seen? It's a maze of sticky, silky threads that connect together and hang from the ceiling of my cave. It's kind of like a spider's web, I suppose. We glowworms shine our glowing light to attract bugs, and they fly right into the sticky trap. Gotcha! Time for dinner! Catching food on the ceiling probably sounds unusual to you. 
And in the Bible, another unusual thing happened on the roof of a house. Some men wanted to help their friend who couldn't walk. They heard Jesus was in town and that he had the power to heal people. When they got to the house where Jesus was, it was packed full. Jesus was like a celebrity and everyone wanted to see him. So the men lowered their friend down through the roof and right in front of Jesus. Whoa! Jesus is God's son, so he had the power to heal their friend and forgive his sins. In the Bible, book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, it says, This is real love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. I wonder, what do you need from Jesus today? Comfort? Healing? Some joy? Or maybe you need forgiveness too. Whatever you need, Jesus has the power to give it to you. Why? Because Jesus is God's son. Hallelujah! Jesus is with you right now. So talk to him. Jesus' love will always stick with you, no matter what. Would you look at the time? I got a glow. <laughs> Get it? Glow? <laughs> That's still funny. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Ray mentioned our Bible verse, and I just want to go through it again with you. So follow along and say it out loud with me. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Hey, that's pretty cool, Ray. I like that Bible verse a lot. God sent his son. Jesus is God's son. Hallelujah. We're going to learn more about this, but first of all, watch this video called No Matter What You're Facing. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue. A little sad, but I know just what to do. Oh, 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 oh. I have learned that I can go to Jesus. He lifts me up whenever I need it. Oh, oh. Today we are exploring the Bible passage in which God is showing how Jesus is God's son. Hallelujah. It starts with a house. Hmm. And some people were going to go to that house. In fact, a lot of people were going to that house. 
because Jesus was there. In fact, so many people were at the house that it was crammed inside. There was not even room and it went outside and into the street and into the yard. Everybody was there to hear Jesus including some Pharisees. Now those Pharisees, they were like, I don't like Jesus. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he needs to follow all the rules. Um, he talks about love all the time. So the Pharisees were there and they even elbowed their way all the way up to the front to be right in front of Jesus and go try to find something wrong with him. Well, while Jesus was speaking, some men brought a man that was paralyzed. It was their friend. And they're like, hey, we know Jesus and we know he heals people. Let's bring him our friend. So they brought this man who was paralyzed. Paralyzed means he could not use his legs at all. So they brought him on a mat and they tried to get in. Couldn't get in. It's packed there. So they had an idea. This is some true friends. They decided to climb up on the roof and dig a hole. Hmm. I'm going to read from Luke and find out what happens. Some men carrying a paralytic on a mat tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they couldn't find a way in because of the crowd, they went up to the roof and lowered his mat through the tiles in the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. They dug a hole, tearing apart the roofs. Some people that were standing there got stuff falling down. They're hearing the noise. They're looking up going, what is going on? Here comes the man right in front of Jesus. Let's find out what happens next. I'm going to read Luke 20. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Did he heal him? He healed him from the inside. He took away his sins. When the Pharisee, remember the Pharisees, they were against Jesus, saw this, they said, who is this fellow that speaks of blasphemy? Because he said, only God can take away the sins. But we all know that Jesus is God's son. Hallelujah. Huh. So... Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive the sins. So not only did Jesus heal the man from his sins, but... He said to the paralytic man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. Immediately, he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. So Jesus knew that he needed to be healed of his sins and heal him physically. Wow, that reminds me, this week I sent you a penny in the mail. If you want to get that out and get a clear cup out, have them ready. I'm going to move this aside so you can see. So the penny goes underneath the cup. Now, when you lower yourself down to be eye level with the cup. There we go. Let's put my chin on there. Can you see the penny yet? Pastor Greg, can you see that penny? I can. Yes. Okay, so that represents the man and his sin that's in his heart. So I think this is a super cool part of the story because not only did Jesus heal the man of his legs, he also healed the man what's in his heart. And sometimes huh, the sin in our heart is way worse than a physical element that we have going on that Jesus can heal. So, I'm going to slowly pour this water into the cup. Pastor Greg, can you see that in there? The penny's gone. Yeah. So it disappears. Wow. How cool is that? It's, it's an illusion. Now the penny is really there. But 
when we ask Jesus to forgive our sins, guess what? They're gone, gone. How cool is that? And it can heal our heart. Let's go on back on up. Mm. Ouch. <sighs> so what I want you to do is take a big breath in, release it out, and just listen to what God has to say to us. Now, they were good friends, the friends of the paralytic man. When they heard Jesus in town, these men picked up their paralyzed buddy and carried him to the house where Jesus was teaching. They knew Jesus could heal their friend. And when they couldn't elbow their way into the house, they hauled their buddy up on the roof, tore a hole so they could lower him to down to Jesus. Those friends must have been in so much trouble, but Jesus healed their buddy. And not just in the way they expected. Jesus healed the paralyzed man's body, but he also healed him in even a bigger way. Jesus forgave the man's sins. Everyone thought this was an amazing thing, and it was. But here's something just as amazing. Jesus wants to do the same thing for you. He wants you to welcome him in your life so he can forgive your sins and be your forever friend. All you need to do is ask. You don't even have to cut a hole in the roof. How cool is that? Jesus is God's son. Hallelujah. I can't wait to see you next week where we're going to be talking about another miracle of Jesus. I hope you have a good week and I will see you real soon.